Your Excellencies, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and I would like to welcome you all. On behalf of the Canadian Embassy, represented by His Excellency, the Ambassador of Canada to Jordan, Mr. Peter McDougall. On behalf of Women in History Jordan, represented by Rada Saba, the Founder and Artistic Director, I would like to welcome you all on tonight's gathering. I would like to start uh, with an answer if you are ready for a boost of inspiration and motivation. If you're ready, then we have come to the right place. Today, we will be celebrating women who made history. And by celebrating this, we are definitely brightening our present and inspiring our future. In today's evening, in today's gathering or this evening, we will be um, introduced, you will be introduced and we will be knowing more about some leading women from different fields. We will know their stories, their careers, and the messages they are conveying to the younger generation. So for each woman here, woman here, and every man, your excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, everyone has a special um, message or a purpose to give, which is inspiring the younger generation to become the best version of themselves. Welcome to all of you. I would like to please welcome His Excellency, the Ambassador of Canada to Jordan, Mr. Peter McDougall for his speech. Your Excellency, Senator Talal Abu Ghazali. Talal, you know it's taken me almost a, two years to pronounce your last name right, so. <laughs> Ghazali, I got it now. Uh, your Excellency, Senator Haifa al Najjar, Rada Saba, where's Rada? Um, uh, the founder of Women in History Jordan, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all of you coming tonight. Vous êtes très nombreux, merci beaucoup. Masal here. I'm delighted to be hosting the third edition, of, now the microphone's working, there we go. The third edition of Women in History Jordan Summit here at the Canadian Embassy in Amman. The journey of Women in History Jordan began last year in 2017 when Rada Saba, a name you will hear over and over again tonight, I think for inspiring us all, approached the embassy about organizing an event to honor Canadian and Jordanian women inspired by the Canadian tradition of Women in History Month. Every year in October, Canadians celebrate the achievements and contributions of women and girls across the country and throughout our history. By knowing and celebrating the successes of women in our history, we are able to inspire new generations to continue building the path that was paved by these remarkable women. Women in History Month is one of the many ways that Canada promotes the empowerment of women and gender equality. Canada is far from perfect, but we recognize that we all have an important role to play in, the cha in championing the rights of women and girls. But this is why women's empowerment and gender equality are at the core of Canadian values and priorities, both at home and abroad. For example, at home in Canada, and you've probably heard this many times, Prime Minister Trudeau leads a gender equal cabinet, 50% women, 50% men. Abroad, Canada has adopted a feminist international assistance policy, which recognized that, is that promoting gender equality and women's empowerment is the most effective approach to eradicating poverty and to building more peaceful, inclusive, and prosperous societies. This year's theme for Women in History Month is hashtag make an impact in honor of the women and girls who've made a lasting impact as pioneers in their field. Whether as business leaders, politicians, researchers, artists, or activists, these women of impact have helped shape Canada into a thriving, diverse, and prosperous country through their achievements and desire to make a difference. Women in History Jordan also strives to do just that, create a platform and space where Jordanian women come from different fields together to share their challenges and successes and inspire one another to make a positive impact on their communities and to build a brighter future for women, for girls, and for all of society. Following the success of, of uh, Women in History uh, Amman last year, we went to Ma'an, and it was a, really a tremendous success as well. So I want to, again, 
uh, applaud Rada for, ins for inspiring us to do that. The success of Women in History Jordan is a partnership that Canada is very proud to be part of. These are the kinds of initiatives that Canada is keen to support, local grassroots initiatives that grow and succeed because of the need in the local community. The women's rights movement in Jordan is not, of course, new. Many of you have played a leading role in it. I mean, Jordanians have made very significant wins in the last number of years on gender equality. There is clearly much further to go. As Women in History Jordan evolves into a tradition of its own, Canada's role will be one of moral support, advocacy, and I'm honored to announce, and I'm honored to have been asked, that I will be the honorary chair of Women in History Jordan, symbolizing Canada's support for this endeavor. Thank you very much to the Canadian and Jordanian panelists who will be with us here tonight. Thank you to all of you members of the audience, men and women who have come out tonight to join us. And I want to thank you also to our sponsors, Orange, Talal Abu Ghazali Group, Karim, Boulevard Arjan, Mode MPR, uh, this and our media partners, Roya and Mazaj FM. And lastly, I would like to thank Haya Zidan. Where is Haya? She's probably outside working. So Haya really should come in for this, but uh, Wayne Haya. Jordanian who works here at the embassy. Uh, her last day of work here is tomorrow. She is sadly moving on to a new job after four years here. But she has been the unsung hero of Women in History Jordan. Uh, working hard with Rada, working hard within the embassy to, to create financial support, driving the agenda of, of women's empowerment and gender equality here. And I'm really sorry she's not here, but uh, she will be back and she's done a tremendous job. Thank you again to all of you for coming. Thank you, Your Excellency. Well, as this evening we are celebrating women who made history, and this is a Canadian heritage. Thanks to Rada Saba, who really started a Jordanian chapter celebrating pioneering women in Jordan. So please welcome Rada Saba, the founder <laughs> and the artistic director. Let's see what she has to tell us. Thank you, Rada. Thank you, thank you. Masa al khair, ashab al maani, al atufa, al saada. Kareem, ahlan wa sahlan bikom. Sorry, excuse me, I'm going to say that in Arabic. <laughs> okay. Shukran jazeelan la thiqa, ili daiman tinnahli yaha safari al Canada wa saad al safir. Shukran jazeelan la kul al shuraka, ili liom am bhattu masalil kthir kbir alina, lahta kun mojidin maakom. Saraha, ana karirt ino had al kilmet kun mil alb, la ano kul al yam bisir, hasistom mil alb. وبدي يعني شكر كتير كبير للشراكة اللي أنا ما بعرف كيف بدي أشكرك عليها دكتور طلال مع مجموعة دكتور طلال أبو غزالي شكرا جزيلا لإلك وأكيد وأكيد إن شاء الله من خلال السنة الجاي بهذا الشراكة إن شاء الله رح نوصل لكتير محافظات ورح نشتغل أكثر على أمور بتهمنا جميعا نساء في تاريخ الأردن كندا منحاول إنه نسقط الضوء على بعض السيدات اللي كتبوا بعض السطور بتاريخ وطنهم بكندا والأردن واليوم لو بدو أستأذن أنس اليوم أول هؤلاء السيدات اللي إحنا رح نسقط الضوء عليهم من خلال حملة على شبكات التواصل الاجتماعي لحتى نتذكر نتذكر مسيرتهم أول إمرأة أردنية تصبح رئيسة بلدية وكانت هي السيدة إيمان حسين الطيمات وإحنا تعاوننا مع إرث الأردن بهذا الموضوع فشكرا لهم واليوم بشرفنا إنه أستاذة آمن العمر كليلان معانا أهلا وسهلا فيك يا أستاذة آمن موجودة معانا وهي رائدة العمل التطوعي بالمفرق وأيضا أول منتخب نسوي لكرة السلة وتأسس عام 1968 تمام. وأيضا من السيدات الرائعات أول مذيعة أردنية أستاذة كوثر النشاشيبي وابنتها ليال النشاشيبي موجودة معنا شكرا لوجودك 
واول تنظيم نسائي في الاردن كان للمغفوره لها الملكه زين الشرف اللي هي اسسته فايضا موجودين معنا وهذا كله بالتعاون مع ارث الاردن وهلا خلينا نشوف النساء الكنديات اوكي اول نساء اول امراه معنا هي منى نمره المستشاره الرئيسيه لحكومه كندا في العلوم Uh, Alliance uh, Ayom Sawin, I hope I'm saying this right. Okay, وهي مخرجة أفلام وثائقية وكتب أغا... وتكتب أغاني وناشطة في حقوق السكان الأصليين في كندا. <تصفيق> وجان سيرفي وهي صحفية ومعلقة ومحللة سياسية. <تصفيق> وكاري بيست اللي هي صحفية وناشطة في حقوق الإنسان. شانتال بوتيكلير وهي ناشطة ورياضية من الأشخاص ذوي الاحتياجات الخاصة بدي أرجع أشكر شركائي كلهم السفارة الكندية وأيضا سعدين هذا العام أنه رئيسنا الفخري لنساء في التاريخ هو سعادة في سفير كندا للأردن هذا شرف كبير لنا Thank you very much مجموعة دكتور طلال أبو غزالي أورنج شريك للمرة الثالثة شكرا جزيلا لكم وأيضا رؤية ومزاج وموت بي آر وأدفايس بي آر وأرجان روتانا وكل الأشخاص اللي ساعدوا لليوم موجودين معنا وشكر خاص للبانلست والمشاركين والمتحدثين اللي اليوم موجودين معنا كلكم تعنوا لنا الكثير ومن غيركم أكيد ما بنقدر نسطر هذا التاريخ اللي بيعني لنا وإن شاء الله يا رب نكون قد هذه المسؤولية شكرا جزيلا Thank you Rada You still have a good voice even though you're tired Thank you Well, as we, as we have witnessed, uh, the pioneering women in Canada, they come from different ethnic background, backgrounds. And this is Canada. This is Canada, the country that really encouraged its citizens to become the best version of themselves and to always be proud Canadians. Thank you. Please uh, welcome Orange is one of our sponsors for this evening. Thank you, Orange, for brightening our night with the brilliant uh, orange colors. Please welcome Rana Dababne. Rana is the PR, CSR, and Corporate um, Communication Director at Orange. Shukran, shukran, Ja. Masa al khair. Rah aawal baad izinkom la lugha al Englishiya. Your Excellencies, Mrs. Haifa Najjar, Mr. Talal Abu Ghazali, Mr. Peter, Ambassador of Canada to Jordan. Uh, esteemed guests, guests, media, and colleagues. Uh, I'm really proud of being here for the third time as sponsor as Orange Jordan. It's not only that uh, we're sponsoring women in history as part of our women empowerment priority at Orange Jordan, but we are supporting a dream and an ambition and determination which we all see in Rada Saba. So I second my opinion to uh, His Excellency, the ambassador of uploading the efforts of Rada Saba. <laughs> and I think you've been extremely modest in the CV because of overall achievements and talents. So again, we're proud, and I'm really proud of seeing a bigger version of this. We've been here last year. I'm really proud of being more, uh, seeing more engagement in this event. As um, I start actually by quoting uh, his late Kofi Annan, he said, there's no better tool for development and no more effective tool than empowerment of women. This is the inspiration for women empowerment uh, strategy and enforcement in Orange Jordan as a main priority for CSR, because we believe that when you empower a woman, you're actually empowering and uh, making a full house ready to engage in the community. So if a girl and a woman is educated, they actually will have more confidence and they will have more skills. And then you give entrepreneurship, it will, she will, it will make her stronger and more daring. So we recognize this as a company. And I will mention a few of our projects, just a few, uh, for more engagement. We always say that we'd like to talk not only for public relations, which, which is another hat that I hold, but for more inspiration. So this year, Actually, I announced it last time, and we're proud that we inaugurated women digital centers in five of the governorates of Jordan. And we've been actually talking about it in the media lately. In these women digital centers, we've worked a lot to empower the women 
not only of having digital space, which is inspiration of Orange being a digital partner, but we empower them with education about communication skills, uh, team leading, and then they, they, we teach them a little bit of digital skills. We add to that two important elements, which is how to use social media in the promotion and marketing of their jobs. And second, the third thing is entrepreneurship, which is how to make business plans. Eventually, and hopefully, the next time and next version of women in history, we'll have women, successful women, talking about it. And you see passion of these women talking in how we, they will make their children study and their, uh, their dreams coming true. The second, actually, I have it on the paper, and I was very happy to see one of the examples of women empowerment. And uh, the example was actually mentioned by Her Majesty in her for she, he for she, she for he, he for she, uh, yeah. <laughs> event. So we have uh, Nada and we have her husband Saeed, Sittat Abyut, is a very, if you can, please stand up. And um, <laughs> we are really proud. Sittat Abyut is one of the projects uh, that was hosted and we only trying to support, of course, it's all their uh, efforts. So really, thank you for the great effort. They are very determined to, it's two things. It's actually powered by a lady and a gentleman who's supporting a lady, which is really inspirational, but they help uh, the ladies at homes to learn uh, more, more tasks. So I will not be long. We're really proud to be here. I'm really proud this year as well to have our uh, Orange colleagues and directors and uh, management to be at the event because at Orange we also have a third of our em employees as uh, females and this is the uh, belief of the company. Thank you so much for having us and thank you Rada and the delegates. Thank you, Rana. Uh, before we move forward, I would like to uh, welcome Haya Zedan because His Excellency the Ambassador was looking for you. He wanted people to cheer you. <laughs> Please welcome the ever inspiring, empowering, and motivating His Excellency Mr. Talal Abu Ghazali. He's a Senate at the Upper House of Parliament and he is the uh, chairman of Talal Abu Ghazali Group. Your Excellency and friend Peter McDougall. I've always enjoyed sharing official, diplomatic, social, and family gatherings with you, but not today, because you, you are my only competition in this beautiful <laughs> meeting of women. I have just come from Lebanon in a female gathering, and there was no competition. <laughs> but today, my competition is very very tough because at, uh, at my age, 80 years, I cannot compete with you in any, in any way. So I'll have to accept you because you're a friend. Otherwise, I would have loved to be alone here. I love women, and I'm going to make a, an announcement, a declaration about the first woman I loved in my life. She was my mother. <laughs> and, and since then, I realized how wonderful women are, and I've always been in love with women. I love women. And I'm very proud that the union of uh, associations of Arab women have given me the title of the number one supporter of women, women in the Arab world. I cherish that pride. And I also feel proud to be here as a very proud Canadian. I am not just a proud Jordanian, I'm a very proud Canadian, and I take special pride in being Canadian because when I was inducted, nationalized as a Canadian, what the judge said to me is something I can never forget. And this is something doesn't, that doesn't happen with other countries. She said, uh, thank you for accepting to be a Canadian. Not congratulations, thank you. This country, this country needs you. 
and I, since then, I feel so indebted to, to Canada for this honor, which was given to me without presidency, without any requirements. It was by a special law which doesn't exist anymore, the Thurlow Act. Under the Thurlow Act, the government can grant, could have, could grant in the past uh, the nationality to people the government thinks are worthy of that nationality. Now, I have very quick 10 telex messages for you. Women, first thing, I love you. I also want you to know that we are on the air live at uh, Talal Abu Ghazali FM station for business and culture, frequency 102.7. My first message today is I want you to know, because I think women should know just as much as men and as decision makers know, that in the year 2020, the world is going to go into a very serious financial and economic crisis. So fasten your belts, get prepared for this event. A very major and serious global crisis that is going to hit the whole world. Number two, we have just, we are just entering into what I call the fourth industrial revolution, the knowledge revolution. And uh, I want you to take interest and concern about what this revolution and how it will impact our life, everything in our life. And for that purpose, in, in two weeks, I have a book which is under publication. It will come out in two weeks under the title Brave Knowledge World. It's, it's for public information, it's not for sale. It's as a gift in order to disseminate uh, knowledge. In the knowledge age, what matters is creation of knowledge. All four largest companies in the world are knowledge companies. None of them is an oil, banking, real estate, or anything. And all four, by the year, 2019, tomorrow, will be worth one trillion dollars each. One trillion, which means one million billion. That's, that's, that's a lot of money. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the value of creation. What is Google, who already achieved the one trillion? It's a computer program, nothing more than that. Nothing. Google has no products, no technology, nothing. It's just a an invention as a computer program. So that is why we are starting this year, Talal Abu Azali College for Innovation, where students do not graduate with a, an examination, they graduate with an invention. And if you don't invent, you don't graduate. Number four, I listened once while I was driven in my car to BBC, warning, it, it was a debate, one of those talk, talk programs about warning mothers about what is called internet addiction of children. My advice to you, encourage your children to be addicted to the internet. That is a healthy addiction and a needed addiction. And any argument in, against that is wrong. And you listen to this old man because I, I in 2001, I co-chaired with uh, Kofi Annan the UN task force on ICT, which developed the strategy for this entire revolution. There is nothing better than internet addiction. Because if, 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 the, if the word addiction is bad, then I would like to tell you that I, I want to be addicted and I want you all to be addicted and I want you to encourage your children to be addicted. The internet is the only 
environment where there is 100% democracy. No country in the world, including my countries, my both countries, Canada and Jordan, and of course America, and every country in the world. No country in the world can or has offered or will offer complete democracy. It's impossible, except on the internet. On the internet, everybody is equal. We are all IP addresses. We are an IP number. Nobody is better than anybody once you plug in. What does this mean? It means that we have a new future where we can be equal. Humans all over the world, men and women. There is no need to talk about empowerment in the, in the knowledge age. You can empower yourself just like any man. You don't need help. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can help you. You can empower yourself. And therefore, I call on women to become knowledge creators. It's great to have women who achieve positions as the first everything. But I want to see a woman creator. I want to see if a female Zuckerberg. I want to see a female Steve Jobs. I want to see a female Bill Gates. I want to see creators, women who are creators and who will form companies like Amazon and Facebook. It's easy. Just you need to be internet addicted. And therefore, number nine, and I'm coming to my end, the end of my speech. Number nine, I would like, and now I address our champion, Gada Saba. Gada Saba, the champion of this initiative in Jordan. I think I would ask you to, if I could impose, to form a committee of women who are addicted to the internet, who can develop a white paper encouraging women to train their children and to learn from their children. You know, a child now, when he's in his mother's lap, and that's why I'm very, very comfortable and, co and um, very optimistic about the future. Because if we have failed, and I'm one of us, the children who are sitting in the laps of their mothers will not fail because they drink milk with knowledge. They have the bottle in one hand and they have the gadget which they catch from their mothers or the sisters or brothers. They are going to change the world. They're going to change the education system. They're going to change life. So the future is in your hands, not in the hands of men. Men wrongly think that they're going to change the world. Not anymore. Because the world of the future is changed through knowledge change. And knowledge change is in the hands of children, what the, what the UN calls digital citizens. The ITU, one of the UN agencies, issues every year a report on the number of digital citizens in every country as a measure of the prof prospects and the future of every country. The largest percentage of ch digital children in a country, children in a country, makes you a better future country. Now, who makes these children digital? It's you. It's not Peter and I. You are in your hands rests the future of, of this country and the future of the world. Finally, number 10. I want to propose to Rada that I would like to offer a Talal Abu Ghazali prize for the Jordanian knowledge creator of the future as a special category because I would like to say that Nothing is as important. It's more important than becoming a senator or a minister or ambassador. 
or whatever, is to have one person. I saw Bill Gates sitting next to Bill Clinton on the TV. And the two Bills were, were giving an interview. And Bill, Bill Clinton was proudly leaning towards Bill Gates to show the world that he is sitting with Bill Gates. Bill Gates remains. Bill Clinton may be forgotten in one or two years, Bill Clinton. This is the importance of knowledge creation. And I would like to make this proposal. And I have already, I am very honored that uh, I had uh, a discussion, a panel like this, which we're having today with uh, Bill Gates. And I asked him, what do you call this century? He said, this is the century of artificial intelligence, where creation, using all the tools provided by the knowledge era, Internet of Things, which is coming. We're moving from the Internet to the Internet of Things, where things like this will use the Internet as much as we use it. And we will be talking and working with things. So instead of having to go around this, this automatically will adjust itself to me. I don't have to, to turn around to be able to see all your beautiful faces. And I said, what next? What's about the next century? Because we need to think, and I do, of the future, not in days or years, but in decades and centuries. He said the next century will be the century of wisdom. We now create things to be rich, to be important, to be powerful. At the end of this century, humanity would have matured to realize that we should create things to make us better, to make life better, and to make people better. And that's why I have, I'm very honored that I have recently been elected by the United Nations to a committee called the High, Ad High Advisory the High Advisory Board on Social Impact. How anything, development, economic, or otherwise, affects human beings, not just in its, as, a, as an objective. What is the impact on people? We need, we need a couple of decades until we can become wise enough to use knowledge and creation for the betterment of humanity. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm, I'm honored to be among you. Very um, motivating. Thank you so much. Yes, knowledge is power. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Let me introduce to you this lady who took her role in education, transformed it into a sincere mission to empower the younger generation to believe in themselves, to be proud of themselves, to make their lives, their country, and the world a better place. Please welcome Her Excellency, the Member of the Upper House of Parliament and the Superintendent for the Ahliya School for Girls and the Bishop School for Boys, Her Excellency, Ms. Haifa Najjar. Salamat ya jama'a. Tahiyati. Tahiyati. And I used to be in the business of empowerment, not anymore. I will, I, will, I will share it with you why I don't believe that I am in the business of empowerment. Uh, because I truly believe that my job is to offer my students, my colleagues, spaces, experiences where they can empower themselves. It's not anymore, we empower women. Women are born empowered. <coughs> what we need is to give them the right experiences and the right spaces and, and to support them in building their relations. Uh, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Canada, uh, I, I always present myself as a good citizen of Jordan. Uh, and I believe in my country. I truly believe that Jordan is in the heart. Well. Uh, Fadi knows this, 
because uh, I am you surrounded by by my non biological daughters and my non biological sons, and the image that we all share is that we are in the heart of our schools. Our schools are in the heart of Amman. Amman, Amman al Asima is in the heart of Jordan. The Jordan is in the heart of the Arab world, and the Arab world is in the heart of the whole world. And we tru I truly believe that Jordan is, is about wisdom. Jordan's mission uh, has always been about moderation, about inviting relations. Jordan has been a center of moderation, uh, a center of modernity, a center of knowledge creation. However, I understand our reality. But when it comes to the vision of Jordan, I believe that uh, uh, Canada is, is very similar to Jordan, uh, at least when it comes to the values of the country. And I'm, at this particular time in history, I'm very proud of Canada. And it's, it's genuine, authentic search for our uh, shared humanism. So I'm very proud to be in Canada at this particular moment. <laughs> you have a beautiful and inspirational story. Ustak. قصتك بين بين انتقالك من فلسطين للأردن نضالك إيجادك لها المؤسسة العظيمة فأنت source of inspiration by all means however أنا دائما بحذر طلابي أن يلهموا بالقصة هون غادة سمحت لي أحكي بالعربي مش هون الحذر للنساء إحنا النساء اللي بدنا نغير العالم وبدنا نخلي الأردن على خريطة العالم من ناحية العقل والمعرفة والنولج كرييشن والإنوفيشن والكرييشن إنه نحن بنعمل إحنا من 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 كل واحد فينا بده يخلق قصته أي أي أنا قد ألهم سمر سمر تلهمني بس أنا وسمر بدنا نساعد زارة تنتج قصتها الجديدة إذا بدي أصير مهووسة بقصة سمر ولا بقصة هيفا بصير بحاسة حالي مش قادرة أنتج الجديد فإحنا بدنا نرجع نقول وي إحنا فعلا بحاجة لمعرفة بحاجة نسمع بعض إحنا نساء العالم العربي نساء الأردن نساء فلسطين ولبنان اللي إحنا بقلب العالم إحنا بحاجة نرجع نقول كيف بدنا نتعلم من قصص بعض وباحترام شديد لبعض وبانفتاح حقيقي على قصصنا يعني أنا ما بنسى طاولة المطبخ في معسكر الزرقاء والدتي وإحنا بطاولة المطبخ كانت تقولنا وين ما تروحوا وين ما تيجوا اعرفوا انكم طلعتوا من هاي الطاولة ممكن تروحوا على محلات كتير بالدنيا بس ما أنا عمركم تنسوا ريحة زيت والزعتر ممكن تروحوا عن مع بيل جيتس كنت تذكروا طاولة المطبخ تذكروا الزيت إنه شو ما فيش إشي ممكن تتعرضوا لظروف صعبة أو ممكن تعطيكم الحياة كتير بس الشبع الحقيقي للإنسان للإنسانية بيجي من خلال احترام الإنسان للقبة الطيبة احترام الإنسان للعلاقة الإنسانية الطيبة وإحنا النساء بالذات بحاجة لبعض حتى نقدر ننتج المعرفة الكرياتيفتي والإنوفيشن عند النساء uh, by the way, we are creators of new life. To start with, we, we create life. Women are creators of life. And if we don't create, literally create, we, through our relations, we do create the new. Uh, and we need to, uh, of course, predict the future. We need to predict the future. We need to know that the world is coming الذكاء الاصطناعي بس إذا حقيقة من اليوم ما نضلنا إحنا من أجل القيم المشتركة الإنسانية اللي بتجمعنا ونشتغل مع بعض على إنه هذا هذا الذكاء الاصطناعي بده يدعمني ويساعدني ما بده ينتصر علي أنا ما بدي أسلمه بس لرؤوس الأموال وأسلمه للحكومات اللي بدها بدي أسلمه لمجتمع إنساني ديمقراطي نعم العالم بالعكس الديمقراطية عم بتجيب ناس بس إذا إحنا مع بعض ناضلنا من أجل مجتمع إنساني 
عادل وحكيم بخليها نرجع نقول في عنا فرصة وهذا الاوبورتونيتي لنرجع احنا في هاي المنطقة من العالم نجدد نفسنا وي نيد تو وي احنا بدنا نيونس بدنا نجدد حالنا والتجديد لحالنا ما ممكن يكون بس من خلال صحيح البنوك ولا من خلال الحكومات ولا من خلال رجال القوة بالعكس والمال بده يكون من خلال تحالف إنساني يجمع قيم ومشروع تربوي جديد نعم مبني على الكرياتيفيتي مبني على العلم والمعرفة مبني وبعمق على العلم مبني على العقلانية لكن هاي العقلانية لليوم عم تنتج عم تصرف ملا مليارات على الأسلحة وعم تصرف مليارات على الذكاء الاصطناعي وعم تقبل لأطفال تندبح بسبب الذكاء الاصطناعي مندبح لليوم أهل الغزة مهددين في مياههم أكثر ما مياه ملوثة إحنا الأردن ما عنا مي أنا بعتقد إنه فرصتنا إحنا نساء الأردن هو بالتحالف مع نساء كندا اللي بيحملوا قيمنا ما بدنا نتحالف مع لانه في كثير نساء عظيمات وناجحات بالابتكار وبالعلم وبالميديا انا بناتي هون كارولين هون وغادة غدا نسيت بس بتعرفي زي الام صعب تقول لبنتها بس يعطيك العافيه وجود صبايا اللي هالقد بحبهم فرصتنا انه بي بي لنقدر يكون عندنا الصوت المختلف الصوت اليوم بيقول فهمين العالم شو معاناته فهمين نجاحاته فهمين إنجازاته لكن فهمين إحنا بمنطقة العربية هاي إحنا تكس يعني لترلي مكسرين بدنا نرجع على قوايا العودة وبنجاح وبقوة بده الماء ما ما نسمح بعد اليوم بالتكسير وما نسمح لهاي التح من الله من نرجع نقلب هاي التحالفات من خلال تحالفات جديدة إحنا عم نبنيها النساء مع بعض النساء والعلم النساء والإعلام النساء والكرياشن والإنوفيشن النساء والديزاين إحنا بدنا نساء كرياتورز of their of the future بس هن اللي بيصمموا the future they want to to create إحنا إذا ما كمان فكرنا إنه حقنا نصمم مستقبل مستقبلنا مستقبل أولادنا مش بس مراكز البحث واللي عم بعملوا مؤتمرات العالمية بدهن يصمموا عنا بدنا نقولهم آي بدنا نرجع نحكي ب ب بروح الأكتيفيس إحنا النساء ناشطات إحنا أكتيفيس إحنا ما بنقبل لابني زي ما كانت والدتي تحكي بسرش أنت معتك تكون مليانة تسمح لحالك تأكل التفاحة وتكب نصها وابن الجيران جوعان احنا ما بنقبل بدنا الروحانية هاي الحلوة اللي تجمعنا ونعم نقدر نرجع بخلال فترة زمنية كنا مع بعض بتعاون كندا وبتعاون العالم معنا لانه الاردن هو حامي حدود العالم احنا نقدر نكون نعيد تشكيل لغتنا الكلمات اللي نستعملها انه نعم الاردن يستحق الاردن از is literally uh, protecting the borders of the world. Yes, Jordan, uh, despite the economical challenges, uh, Jordan opened its borders, houses. We opened our houses and, and uh, received more than one and a half million refugees. Despite we opened our houses and we will be able to create new life to Jordan, we want our country. We are accountable to start with على واقعنا and we want أردن منتج حداثي بناء constructive عادل يدعم المرأة في تدعم المرأة والمرأة هي مشاريك 
بانتاج المعرفه الجديده وانا بعتقد انه احنا فكره انه ممكن جدا مع بعض نكتب قصه الاردن الجديده بدعم العالم بتحالفات جديده احنا بنشكلها واهم كلمه العالم بكل معرفته الجديده ما بيقدر احنا النساء نتحرر منها وهي محبتنا احنا انولدنا بالمحبه والمحبه هي اللي بتجمعنا وانسانيتنا شو ما كان في محاوله لتكسيرها احنا بنرجع نبنيها بنرجع نبنيها بحريه المراه حره المراه الرجل يمكن هو بحاجه للمراه المراه تستطيع ان تعيش مستقله و يعني ولكنها محبه ومش ممكن تستغني عن حبها لا لاولادها ولا لجيرانها ولا لزميلاتها ولا صديقاتها وفي النهايه انسانتها انسانيتنا بجمعها المحبه والعطاء والمراه الاردنيه ستنتج المعرفه الجديده وبدها تكون شريك في انتاج المعرفه وبتصميمها باطار قيمي ما نقبل العالم انه يسرقوا منا شكرا كثير يا صبايا يعطيكم العافيه